Well, I, I do have a couple questions for you. Um, I think what you're articulating here, I know uh, in the Gotham program um, that we do, we read one of your books, and one of the comments at the end of every year is, um, you know, I never understood that God was actually interested in my work. And you articulate this in this idea that in redemption, God has multiple divine purposes. It's not, God is not just interested in the salvation of souls, but he's also interested in renewing the actual work that you do. Um, and so a lot, of, a lot of us, this was a new concept. Uh, can you explain to us why, why haven't we heard this growing up in the church, that God actually cares about what we do and not just who we are as people? Well, when you think of God's purposes in the world, and certainly the Lord God wants us to speak about Jesus as the only Savior and invite people to, to come to Christ. But, but, you know, when you think of the thousands of years of, let's take a, 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 a country like China, the thousands of years where they produced art in China before any Christian ever showed up. Mm. And, and, and I believe with all my heart that when, when people did the, the sculptures, when people did the etchings, uh, that God looked at that and said, that's good. And that in some important sense, this counts for the gathering in of the, the riches. You know, the book of Revelation talks about the, that the wealth and the glory, the honor and the glory of the nations will be gathered into the city on the last day. And, and it wasn't like that was thousands of years of wasted time, but that there's, there, there's good stuff there. And that it's our job to understand it and to take it very seriously, uh, because God does. That's, that's a part of it. Well, why haven't we thought more about that? And, and I think a lot of people just haven't thought about that. Uh, you know, do, w was the art of China a waste of time until the first person came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? And, and it seems to me obvious that it was not. Hmm. And that part of it is to have that very rich and robust understanding of, of God's creating purposes and the things in which God takes delight. And, and, you know, in many ways, I mean, I was raised on a little song that went like this, save, save to tell others, you know. Well, we are saved. God wants us to tell others, but that's not the only reason why God saves us. Uh, the, we have to ask, what does God save us for? And God saves us for that work of transformation, that work of renewal, that, that work of showing forth his rule. And even in the very little things of life, uh, solving a math problem, or, or writing a poem, or, or just settling an argument in a, in a family uh, that we are showing forth the rule of, of, of Jesus Christ. And uh, I wish as a seminary president, I wish I could understand better why the church doesn't do more of this, because I, 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 I often hear pastors, uh, not fuller graduates, but, but pastors <laughs> who, uh, uh, unfortunately, I think some fuller graduates as well, but, but who act as if the most important thing is get people involved in churchy stuff, you know. And it is very important for us to gather in those sacred places of, of, of worship in the presence of God. But we're gathered there to once again remind ourselves that he is Lord and he is King and he sends us forth from the church. Mm. And I think we've got a lot of work to do to try to figure out why that hasn't been a, the operative theology of so many of our, especially our evangelical churches. Mm. What advice do you have? I know when uh, we talk about these kind of concepts to people, um, you know, you can speak about God caring about your work, but then when you go back to work Monday morning, uh, you just, you're sitting in your desk or in front of your computer, and you're just wondering, uh, asking yourself, how could God care about this? I process checks all day. Yeah. Uh, you know, why would God look down on, on this, and how does this give glory to God? How do you help cultivate that larger awareness? How do you, how does God open our eyes to see, you know, despite what might appear mundane to us, mm -hmm. that this actually matters to God? How do you cultivate that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think that's a very important question, and I, I don't want to treat it. I mean, I could say, well, you've got to hear God saying, here's another check, do it again, you know, and, and God takes delight in that. Um, but, but I do think it's important for us to constantly, you know, Max Dupree, the great business leader in the book that he wrote, leadership and arts is that the, the first responsibility of leader is to define reality and to be thinking about how processing those checks uh, fits into the larger patterns of life that those checks stand for, uh, genuine human concerns, they're, they're dealing with fundamental human needs. And uh, it may even be that, 
that uh, one way to approach that is to sit and look at that pile of checks or this, the computer screen and just pray about that. Lord, there are people behind this. There mm -hmm. are people out there mm -hmm. who are really struggling with basic issues in life. And I pray that somehow, some way, uh, what I'm doing today will count for the coming of your kingdom and will be revealed on the last day as to have been an important, uh, an important contribution mm -hmm. to the work of the kingdom. I think part of it is the consciousness that we, we bring to it all. Now, I know that's, that's difficult in some cases, but mm -hmm. I think it, it, the more we think about it and pray about it, mm -hmm. you know, we did a wonderful tour of Chinatown uh, last evening. And you, you, you're walking around Chinatown, you know, and there's a, a, a fast food place or there's a, a, a laundry or a photo studio or whatever. And it'd be very interesting just to, uh, to do a praying tour of, of those places and say, Lord, there may be things going on behind these doors, maybe go things going on in the lives of these people uh, that, that are very important to you. And, and I want to pray for, for those lives. Hmm. Well, you mentioned your, your glimpse yesterday as you and Phyllis, your wife, uh, went through Chinatown. Was there anything particular as you guys were walking through um, that you just noticed? Um, I know you spent some time in China as well, and as you were uh, walking around Chinatown here in New York City, um, anything stand out to you as you were walking around? Well, I think, you know, one of the things I always think of when I remind myself that I have to think theologically and spiritually about just walk-arounds like that is uh, just to try to try to think about um, uh, some of the hopes and fears. You know, I, one, mm. one of my favorite lines, I get a lot of my theology from Christmas carols, and a great line in the uh, old little town of Bethlehem, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Mm. And I think of Chinatown as a place where hopes and fears of all the years, the, the immigrant experience, the the, the, the mm. xenophobia, the, the racism, uh, the, the struggles of families and the like. And to, to see more than just a bunch of people on a Friday night walking around having a good time, but to think about what those walls are telling, what those, those building facades are, are saying to us. And to really ask, what would be good news? If I had a chance uh, to, uh, uh, I've got a long story that I won't tell, but I once went with a group of uh, people who were thinking theologically about uh, popular culture, and I went with them to the Rolling Stones concert in the Rose Bowl. And at a certain point, the pastor turned to me and said, you know, if you had a chance to suddenly, and now uh, we're right after the, the Mick Jagger, just before he was going to do Satisfaction, uh, <laughs> if you had a chance right now, the whole place went silent, and they said, and now a word from the president of Fuller Theological Seminary, you know? <laughs> and it is interesting. Uh, to ask that question, each of us, you know, if suddenly I were asked to talk about my deepest hopes for the human condition, uh, what would I say? What would I say standing on that street corner uh, in Chinatown? What would I say in the bank in which I work? What would I say at the Metropolitan Opera? Uh, what are the hopes and fears that the gospel addresses? And I think that is, uh, I won't do my Mick Jagger imitation. But <laughs> 